Today's video is a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be using a software program called GeoGebra, and it is a multi-platformed software that is free, so you can download it and you can play along with me on your computer, iPhone, iPad, uh, and uh, make all the constructions nice and neat and save yourself some time if you'd like to do that. So I've opened up a window. Here we go. And you guys will just, I'm going to make a triangle. And there we go. And let's just do this like we did in the last video. Let's make our in center. And now I, what I need to do is to create uh, angle bisectors. Of course, I know that. So I can go under this and choose an angle bisector. And I choose the three points that I want to bisect. And I can do that again. Yay. Much faster than before. Two, three. And the great thing about this is what's called a dynamic construction because now I'm not, I'm not stuck to one triangle. I have multiple triangles. As a matter of fact, I have infinite amount of triangles. And you can see as I move this around, the in center is moving, but it, they are always, always concurrent and they're right there. And if you remember, the in center is, uh, it's, it's the it's called that because it is the center of the inscribed circle. So let's do that. Uh, let's make the inscribed circle. And to do that, I need to first uh, put a point that is uh, at the intersection. Here it is here, and we'll call that. And we'll, let's go ahead and name it, right? Why, why don't you, why don't we? Here, we, we'll call it the end center. And to make the inscribed circle, if I need to make a uh, radius, and the radius needs to be perpendicular from here to here. So we will make a perpendicular line. Uh, there's a perpendicular line. Choose that. Point and here. And that once again, I need to make a point at the intersection of those two. Now I can make a circle that is centered at the end center and goes through that point. And now when I move the triangle, the circle changes. So I don't have to do it over and over again. And of course, any triangle, there you go. You see the end center and voila. Okay, let's move on to a new triangle. Uh, they make it really easy at GeoGebra because a perpendicular bisector, I have one right here, and it's one of the choices right there, perpendicular bisector. So all I have to do is choose a segment and make a perpendicular bisector, choose a segment, perpendicular bisector, really quick. And if I wanted to move that around, you can see that the perpendicular bisector, well, is sometimes on the hypotenuse, sometimes on the interior, and sometimes on the exterior. Notice the kinds of triangles that the perpendicular bisector, where it is. And so I guess I should put a point there. Uh, point at intersection there. That's it. And while we're at it, we might as well name it. Um, of course, that name is the circumcenter. And yes, it is true that the circumcenter is on the hypotenuse, what kind of triangle do you think that is? As a matter of fact, you're right, that is straight, that's a 90 degree angle. That's, the circumcenter is at the middle. And when it's, because it's equidistant to the two vertices, actually all three vertices, that it's at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And for an acute triangle, it's on the interior, and for an obtuse triangle, it's on the exterior. And I could, once again, circle would center through the point. If I go through here and here, you'll notice that it hits all three points. Okay. Next triangle. After that, we did, um, let's see, what do we do? We did a, oh, the medians, right? So now to do medians, I need midpoints. Uh, midpoints are, where are the midpoints? Uh, there they are, midpoint or center. So if I just click on the segment, it puts a midpoint. 
boom, boom, three, three midpoints. Now I need to make a segment, uh, a line or segment through there. I can choose either one. We'll make a segment. Go from here to here, here to here, and here to here. And once again, they are concurrent. I didn't lie. And, but there's, obviously, there's no way I can make that move outside of the triangle, right? And better than last time, if, if I were able to, as a matter of fact, I think I can here. Uh, I want to. What do I want to choose? I want to choose intersection right there. That is my centroid. And I think I can measure a distance here. Let's see. Distance or length. All right. So there's a distance. I can measure from here to here. And it says 2.56. I can measure from here to here and 5.12. And if I take, this is probably going to round a little bit. Uh, I'll do another one here. Then we GD. Notice that it's put in, 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 in GC, 5.18. And if I move them around, those change, right? Uh, if I can get it to a nice number, right? Uh, see, it looks like it's rounding, right? But 2.44, 4.88, uh, twice as big from on the longer side. So from the vertex to the centroid is twice as big as from the centroid to the midpoint. Again, vertex to centroid is twice as long as centroid is to the midpoint. And that's, of course, of a median. All right. And finally, here we go with the altitudes. I have all three altitudes meeting at the orthocenter, right? And uh, the orthocenter is sometimes on the interior, sometimes at a vertex, course that's a right triangle and sometimes it's on the exterior and that would be an obtuse triangle right so it does move around okay now the best part of today I have all three points into one triangle and I can move them around and and have them let's see let's see let's see, look at the there's this there's one special triangle right there where the orthocenter is at the vertex, the circumcenter is at the midpoint of the hypotenuse, uh, the centroid somewhere in the middle, and there's the end center. Isn't that cool? That has to be a right triangle. Yes, because that's two altitudes meeting at the orthocenter, the circumcenter right there. So, and if I make it an acute triangle, I can, oh, what kind of triangle am I making now? If, if I could line them all up, you, you see I have my, inscribed circle. That, of course, must be an equilateral triangle. So at an equal, with an equilateral triangle, all the points will line up. If it's isosceles, let's see if we can do that. If it's isosceles, it looks like I can line the points up, right? And you remember Leonard Euler, who did the seven bridges? Well, he noticed this also. And he did not have any software programs. He noticed that there were certain triangles, of course, the equilateral triangle, where they lined up all at one point. But in, in isosceles, I can get them all to line up. But if I move over here, it seems that three out of the four line up. Let's make a line segment. How about that? And let's, let's see, go from here to here. And if I move this around, one point is sometimes on there, but I can all, but I can always line up the three points. And as a matter of fact, that's called the Euler segment, or the Euler line is a line that goes through these three points, the orthocenter, centroid, and circumcenter. And we know that the centroid is the medians, so it's on the interior of the triangle. The orthocenter will be outside on obtuse triangles, and the circumcenter is going to be outside on, on obtuse triangles. The end center is way over here now, right? But, um, and I can make them just like go crazy, right? All right, so somewhere, and there's that right triangle, they will line up. And the order line 
is the line segment through, uh, or excuse me, the line through those three points. The Euler, Euler segment starts at the orthocenter through the centroid and the circumcenter. Now the crazy thing is that the centroid still does its magic. From KM, which is circumcenter to centroid, and from the centroid to the orthocenter, still remains to be that one-third, two-thirds ratio. So uh, this segment from, from circumcenter to centroid will be one-third of the circumcenter to orthocenter, or centroid to orthocenter is twice as big as the other one. And there you go. Hopefully you have fun with this, and maybe it's a little clearer. Okay.